Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is a beautiful day out here. Thought I would pick up the camera and just have a quick talk about storing the cannas. I've had people asking me about it. It's not time yet where I live to be digging them up and storing them, but I know for a lot of people who watch the channel, you're maybe zone five or even zone four. So I wanted to make sure to get this video out about digging those cannas up for those of you where it is time. It could still be a few weeks to maybe even over a month here. You just never know. It not being time for me to dig mine and store them yet does make this a little bit more difficult to talk about. Because typically I like to actually go through the process and show everybody what's going on. But I figure we'll just keep it short and sweet because it's pretty simple. It's not very complicated. The first thing that we have to think about when it comes to digging up the cannas is well, when do we dig them up? When is the appropriate time? So typically dig the cannas up right after the first frost. That is, if the first frost kills back some of that foliage. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes we'll have a first frost here that just like kinda maybe gets some of the plants, but if the ground's still warm enough or if the pool's still up and running, there's still some protection. So just because your area has a first frost doesn't mean it's time. I'm talking about when the first frost comes through that takes these leaves and makes them shrivel and crinkle. You'll know, you'll see them and go, oh, okay that's not what those are supposed to look like and that's when it's time to go ahead and start digging them up and putting them away and then the first step there is to go ahead and cut these down to about four to six inches above the ground pardon the background noise there's a blue jay and crow fight going on four to six inches above the ground you're just going to want to leave a stub of growth above the soil line really the only reason to do that is so that you have a better gauge of where the plants are because next you need to dig them up you don't want to cut them all the way to the ground and then not have some sort of reference of what area you need to be digging, right? You need to know what's going on down there. This next part is one of the most important things to keep in mind when digging these up. It's a good idea to get as far around the root ball as possible with the shovel when you lift those up. Because the last thing we want to do after growing these out all season long is to take a shovel and accidentally pierce that rhizome. You don't want to cut that up. want to try and get as nice big solid chunk of root out of the ground. Oftentimes, if you dig a larger hole around the base of the canna, you can get in with your fingers once that soil's loosened up and just feel where the rhizome is, and then you can gauge where you need to take your shovel and get underneath it to lift it up. Some people will use the gardening forks for that. Works great, just again, be careful. You don't want to pierce the rhizome. Okay, I went ahead and pulled a little offshoot off one of my other cannas just so there's more of a visual aid here. So after you get your rhizome out of the ground, which will probably be much larger than this, like I said, this was just a little offshoot that I sacrificed. The next thing I like to do is to take the hose and give them a quick rinse, get as much of the soil off of them as possible. If there's still some sand and a little bit of soil in there, that's really, it's not the end of the world, that's okay. They don't have to be perfectly squeaky clean, just want big clumps of the dirt out of there. Those can get moist again during the storage process and lead to rot. Now that all that soil's been washed off of there, that's when I take these and I'll put them on top of like a paper towel or something in the house and just let them dry out. I'll do that for anywhere from like five to seven days, just as really as long as it takes until you start to see these roots get a little bit crumbly. You'll be able to tell you'll likely be able to look at them and say, okay, yeah, that's done. It's cured. You can cut this back further and then go ahead and throw it in a box and store it. In the storage process, that's when things start to become not necessarily more complicated, but more dependent on some variables where you live. Just what the weather's like where you live. But in general, what most people do, what I usually do, is once those have cured, that's when it's time to go ahead and wrap them up in something, some sort of paper, if you still get newspaper, that will work wonderfully. I just use recycled paper that I put in the bottom of my bird cages. That works well. Just gently wrap them up, and then I'll normally put them in a milk crate or in like a file box, something of the sort, and then store that someplace that's cool, dark, and dry until it's time to go ahead and either get them started into a pot or to move them back outside and get them planted up. If you live in a very dry climate and humidity is going to be in... What is it? A gust of wind just came through here and like blew all the leaves right out of the tree and startled me. Anyways, if you happen to live someplace where the winter air is extremely dry, then it may not be a bad idea to, instead of wrapping them in newspaper, to put them into a like a cardboard box or burlap lined container that is breathable with some moistened vermiculite that can help keep them from drying out too much during the winter time. 
Uh, but if you're just on the border with what to do there, then I usually suggest just going with the easier route with the paper just to be safe. And then uh, as we should be doing anyways, check on them monthly, see how they look. If they start to look shriveled and desiccated, you can absolutely pull those out, give them a little soak for a couple hours or spray them down with a water bottle, keep them someplace that's dark, like on your counters, out of the sunlight for about, I don't know, 24 to 48 hours. You wanna moisten them up and then let them dry out again but not let them experience heat or light because then that could trigger them to get going again and then move them back into storage. Yeah, the checking on our stored bulbs and rhizomes every month is something we're all supposed to do anyways, but I mean, raise your hand if you always forget. Me, I forget all the time. I have a reminder set in my phone and usually about 50% of those I'll check. So I really only check like every other month. That's even with the reminder on my phone. And that's it. Sorry, I couldn't really provide more visual aids there. I suppose I could have gotten a little box out and wrap this up and done make believe but i think that would have just been kind of silly and pointless I don't know, that just didn't really seem necessary because it's not complicated yeah i just didn't want to overcomplicate it pull them up wash them off let them dry wrap them up store them away they should be okay well, comment down below tips tricks suggestions always appreciated people have lots and lots and lots of methods for how they store their rhizomes and bulbs for some things i'll use perlite sometimes use a vermiculite for the cannas I normally just use, like I said, shredded paper or if the recycled paper that goes on my bird cage, just something that's light and airy. Oh, and don't stack them too high so that air can move around them. It's best if you can have a layer of them where they aren't touching and then maybe have one more layer on top and alternate their placement in the package. That's usually a good idea. That way more airflow can be facilitated. I'm gonna run, got the tortoise out here, ready for breakfast and lots of yard work to get to. And a beautiful day. Had lots of showers this morning. The soil's nice and loose. Looking forward to getting my hands in the dirt. So I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And like I said, if you got tips, tricks, suggestions, put them down below. Always appreciate it. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.